Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rexford here, and welcome back to yet another gimmick tutorial. Today, we're going to be going over Flappy Bird, because why not, right? <laughs> and um, be also because of the fact that I think that it would be, I don't know, it's a pretty fun tutorial to do, and so you can see a lot more Flappy Bird clones out there, but, um, you know. I don't know. It's just it's just something that I wanted to do for a while and um you know, I thought the perfect time would be to do it now. So anyways, as you can see, um it, it's not Flappy Bird in its entirety, but for the most part, we do have a lot of the core Flappy Bird um aspects of the game. So we have Flappy himself with that angled directional movement as well as the randomly generated pipes. Yes, they are randomly generated and uh, the background, you know, the score and all that kind of fun stuff. So anyway, Anyways, I'm obviously not very good at this, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, head back into Game Maker, which is something that I am slightly good at, and uh, so we can go ahead and begin this tutorial, right? So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start off with the sprites. Now, the sprites actually do have some importance to them, um, in that for the player object, or Flappy Bird, if you will, um, <laughs> we basically have um, a 32 by 32 sprite. Now. The reason I did 32 by 32, uh, despite the fact that his actual sprite is smaller than that, is simply just for the fact that I can place him easier in the room with a 16 by 16 or 32 by 32 grid. Um, so the size of the sprite doesn't matter, but what does matter, and which is mainly why I wanted to show this character, was because his origin, you'll notice, is centered. Now, wherever the origin is on your character, uh, that is where he's going to start being angled from. Right, so it's like if you push a pin through like a wheel in like the middle of the wheel and you start spinning it, that's where you know it would spin. If you push the pin somewhere else in the wheel, it would spin from that angle. So that's basically what the origin is in this case. All right, so just make sure to have it centered in your character. All right, so now with the SP underscore pipe underscore U, which stands for up, and then obviously that one stands for down. Um, the main thing that matters here is just the sheer size of this. Now. At the end of this tutorial, once you have everything working and you know figured out, you can go ahead and start changing values of, of sprites and, and room sizes and all that stuff. But for now, just try to keep to the values that I have, just so you can get it working. And then after all of this is done, you can start tinkering with other stuff. But for now, this is a 32 by 48 um, sized sprite. And uh, we'll see the importance of that a little later on and the sort of spawning and stuff. And then obviously the one right here... Um, yeah, is the same thing, just flipped. Okay. And finally, this SPR underscore score get. Uh, the values for this are 32 by 42, and they do matter. And this is what's going to be used to uh, actually get our score in the game. All right, background. It uh, doesn't really matter. You can have whatever you like, whatever size. Uh, font score. Now, <laughs> I did this previously in another tutorial, and um, mainly the only reason that I have this font score here is to just change up the size of the font instead of actually changing up uh, or changing it up manually in code. So, if you want to go ahead and manually code it, uh, when we get to that point, feel free. But uh, for now, I just chose a font, changed the size up to 24. Alright, so finally getting into the actual meat of this tutorial, the objects, we have our obj underscore player, or I guess flappy bird, if you like, and uh, we have a simple step event here, and in the step event we have, whoa, some, some code with a lot of comments, so hopefully you guys won't get too stuck uh, in this. If you have any questions, you could just look to the comment section, or comment section, comments I guess on the side. Um, but basically this is pretty simple. Uh, we just have some basic gravity here and all this code, by the way, will be in the description if you want to go and copy and paste that. Um, but yeah, this is just simple gravity uh, and then this image angle underscore uh, or image underscore angle minus equals 2.5. Uh, as you can see by the comments, it basically ma uh, just makes it so when our character is falling, he's constantly being angled downward. Alright, so pretty simple. Uh, and then we have if keyboard underscore check press to VK up, uh, this is what's used for the flapping. So V speed um, minus 5 or equals minus 5. You can change this value if you'd like him to make, or if you'd um, like him, or like to make him, excuse me, uh, flap higher. And then the image angle gets changed to 30. So that's kind of, it gives him the illusion that he's, he's actually going upward, I guess. 
All right, and then if place meeting x y o b j underscore pipe parent, which we'll go over that in just a little bit here. Uh, show message your score is plus string score. So it will basically say your score is, and then this score uh, variable will activate. We'll go over that again in a little bit too. Uh, game restart. So basically, just shows your score, then restarts the game. And then I also have this intersect boundary action, which you can find right here. And I essentially have the same exact thing. So basically when you run into any of the sides of the room, uh, it's almost it's basically the same thing as dying. All right, so I'm going to go and skip over these two pipes for now, though they do have some significance. Uh, I'm going to start off with the obj underscore sp uh, pipe spawn. Okay, so in the create event of this, we basically have instance create x plus 0 and, the, uh, and then y plus choose. So... Basically, the x plus 0 is making it so that everything uh, gets created at the relative x area of this object instead of just the actual x area in the room, okay? And then the y plus choose, uh, obj underscore pipe underscore u, is basically choosing a somewhat random value of where this is going to be spawned or created, okay? And then we have alarm 0 equals 100. And in this, we have the same exact thing, but with some more uh, random uh, y values. So what this is doing is this is our random generation. This is how our randomly generated pipes are going to work. So when we have the pipe object there and it's creating different pipes, it's going to choose um, at which y position these pipes are going to be, right? So it's going to raise it one time, and then the other time it's going to maybe uh, raise it just a little less, and it's going to constantly do different heights of our pipes, okay? And that is how that works. And then we continue on over here as well. And as you can see, in each alarm event, um, I've changed up the negatives here. So you can mess around with these values, kind of find what you like for the random generation. Uh, so instead of random 32, we can do random 40, you know, or random uh, 64 and stuff like that. So anyways, that is kind of how to modify your random generation there. Okay, now um, we'll go ahead and head back up to these pipes now really quick, uh, but I wanted to go over this OBJ, or at least just show you guys the OBJ underscore pipe parent really quick. So the reason I have this here is because I've applied it as a parent to both of these pipe objects. Why? Well, because remember if we go back into the player, um, I put it to collision with the pipe parent. So basically when he collides with the pipe parent, it's connected to both of these objects. So instead of putting both, like, collision with both pipes, I just put pipe parent, and it works fine. All right, so probably I'll <laughs> explain that a little bit longer than I needed to. I apologize, but I just want to make sure you guys understand why I did that. So in the create events of obj underscore pipe up, um, or pipe u, I guess, uh, we have h speed minus equals, or equals 2. <laughs> so we're setting it to go at a speed of 2. You can change this value if you'd like to. Uh, and then instance create x plus 0, y, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, minus 522. And these values are actually uh, fairly, like, you want to make sure to keep these values for now, and then you can tinker with them later on. But basically what it's doing here is also the score get. It's creating the other pipe right above it, so, and then it's also creating the score get in between the two. So, yeah. I'll, I'll give you guys a better example of what I'm talking about in a little bit, but uh, for now, just, you know, keep uh jot that down i guess and then for this one we obviously have the same thing uh hbd equals minus two and we don't need the other spawning stuff all right uh, let's see we already went over that and now the obj score so in the obj score create we have score equals zero so this is where we're setting our score variable which we went over earlier in the player object and now in the draw, we're going to typically just draw our score. So set uh, or draw set color, C black. Uh, you can change this to a different color if you'd like to. Uh, and then draw set font, font score. So here's the font uh, where I'm basically just using that to simply change up the size of the score. If you want to go and change it manually, that's where you do it. <laughs> but I'm not that... Uh, I don't like to do that, I guess. And then draw text, 0, 0, score. So this is the 0, 0 is obviously the X and Y, so where you want it positioned in your room. I just want it on the top left, so 0, 0 will suit me fine. All right, and finally, last but not least, the obj underscore score get object. So we have a create event in this object, and we're setting h speed to 2 because it's going to be moving along with our player, or excuse me, with our pipe. And then when collision with the player, 
uh, score plus equals one and then instance destroy. So if we didn't have the instance destroy, it would just basically, as our player moves through it, he'd constantly be getting one score or one point. So we'd end up with like 24 points each time. So, but anyway, so I want to really quickly give you guys an example of how this bonding works. So uh, what we want to do is, first of all, create a room and we'll kind of get the room set up and then I'll show you guys uh, how it works. So create a room. Go ahead and set your uh, score object anywhere in the room. All right, go ahead and set your player in the room, and go ahead and set the um, let's see, spawn object in the room as well. And make sure also forgot to mention this. Make sure to give the uh, spawn object a pipe uh, thing, like sprite. <laughs> All right, and then just go ahead and put it in the room at the very very edge. And what I have set for the settings of the room is my width is 350 and my height is 240. Now, go ahead and copy those values as well. And <laughs> again, I know this is a lot of copying what I have, but go ahead and just copy it for now. And then you can start tinkering with stuff later. And then um, what you want to go ahead and do is set up a view. All right. So enable the use of views. Let me go and uh, kind of bring this down. Or... Huh, never mind. Alright, so anyways, go ahead and <laughs> enable the use of views. Clear background with color. I guess you don't really need to do that. And then visible in the room starts, obviously. And then go ahead and set your width to 320, your height to 240, and then your port on screen to 640 by 480. And then OBJ player, obviously, is object following. I guess you don't really need need that, but I just put it anyways. And then, as you can see here, that's our sort of boundary for our view. And then you'll notice that our spawn object is out of the view boundary, so we're not going to be able to see it. But that's the point. So essentially, this is now we have our room basically set up. This is how our spawning works. So we have our spawn object here, right? So what will uh, what's going to happen? Let me go and get this here. So when our spawn object creates something, which we can't see by the way because we set up our view, it's going to create both a pipe like this and a pipe. Okay, well, I didn't think that out. Uh, let's see, and a pipe like this. All right, and the pipes are always going to have the same gap in between them. Okay, and in between this gap, they're going to create this. All right, well, obviously, it's you know a little, <laughs> it's going to fit, but uh, it's going to be like this. And then it's going to obviously be moving at a speed of two. And every single time it creates one of these, it's going to create a pipe that's bottom below. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. there we go. Uh, a little higher, so it's going to be doing like different y values, and it's going to also be affecting these as well. So these are going to go higher and lower depending on whichever one this is doing. So that's basically how the spawning works. Um, <laughs> hopefully you guys understand, and uh, hopefully this works for you. And this is pretty much the end of the tutorial. We're at 12 minutes. I don't really like to go this long, but hopefully there's a lot of explaining stuff. So also. Really quickly, one last thing I want to go ahead and explain to you guys is if you're using Game Maker Studio uh, and you have like everything set up how I do, like with a view and stuff, uh, it's going to be like really, really pixelated and weird. The reason for that is because by default, Game Maker Studio, or studio um, has interpolate colors between pixels on. Go ahead and turn that off and uh, or uncheck that, and everything should be fine. So. With that, everyone, that is the Flappy Bird tutorial. Feel free to, uh, I also am uh, probably going to post the engine down below. Uh, if you already have good knowledge of Game Maker, feel free to just download that and edit that if you like. And, uh, you know, you can go ahead and do whatever, and I really don't care. And uh, hopefully we'll get some awesome new creative Flappy Bird uh, copies out there, other inspired games, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, with that, hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial, and as always, this has been Rex Furry, and until next time, until next video, I'll see you all then.